What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here. And today I am joined with the Marsman crew to give our reactions to the Summer Game Fest. And that was dropped earlier today of this recording. So we're just going to give our live reactions of the good and the bad that we saw. Because to be honest, there were 50 different announcements in a roughly two hour show. So there's a lot of things to dive into. But overall, we looked into this entire kind of list of things that we watched live. We have to kind of take apart what were the most kind of the good as well as what were some things we kind of were disappointed that we didn't see or that what well, of what we did see so let's jump into the first part the good and overall when i'm thinking about kind of the the, the best thing i saw right in the very beginning was mortal kombat i mean at the end of the day mortal kombat has been hyped for you know quite a while i mean there's a, when you come to the gaming community especially with the release of street fighter 6 being super like probably the best over like the best rated fighting game we've seen in you know i think ever to be honest with you like that over the yeah, higher, smash brothers. Yeah. Yeah, higher than smash brothers most played most streamed most purchased in many many years um you know fighting games have kind of been i wouldn't say like growing in popular because they've always been popular it's just been about really the competition between like the all these different classics uh, classics between you know street fighter uh, mortal kombat tekken smash brothers um, you know, there's many other games too that are fighting, fighting based, but um, Mortal Kombat 1 obviously showed off a pretty lengthy trailer showing off the kind of, uh, you know, because basically um, not only was it a trailer, but it was also a deep dive with uh, kind of the original creator of Mortal Kombat. He's been been a part of the franchise for like, what, 30 years. So um, it was actually pretty cool that the fact this is still the same guy, especially with a lot of turnover that you usually see with uh, a lot of these game developers. But so the trailer itself kind of showed off a, a few things, obviously same type of goriness a lot of the similar characters that we've seen from the past of scorpion and sub-zero and many others um and, and they all kind of have their own like same similar move sets that we've seen before um but they did actually add a kind of new mechanic to mortal kombat which was pretty interesting you have the main roster who is your main character you're going to fight with but then they also have a kind of a they call it a cameo character or a sidekick that is uh not necessarily part of the main roster but it's a side character that you can add to aid you in your fight um which just means like you can be fighting in combinations and then throw your cameo character in to continue your combo or even defend in a way uh which obviously is pretty different from mortal kombat standards a lot of times people just keep chaining different combination attacks just keep it going uh, but now you can even add your, your sidekick along to help you out um, and I honestly, when I looked at this, I thought it was a really cool thing. Obviously, a lot of these characters are returning, but I did get a little nervous about the the side character because if you've uh, you know if you've seen other games before, like you know to to, to make it different than Street Fighter Six being kind of very similar to the same kind of basic thing you've seen over the years, um, and like the drive the you know drive attacks and things like the drive points have been something that they added and adjusted uh, recently, but. Uh, Mortal Kombat trying to change things up a little bit and they kind of took a page out of like the Naruto Shibuya Ultimate Ninja Storm uh, move sets where you have like actually side characters to help you do combination attacks so it was kind of interesting that Mortal, Mortal Kombat's actually adding that in um, but one of the interesting things that I saw about this was that this is the kind of uh, creation of a new storyline um, or a new universe basically it's like uh, you know they broke the they, the end of the last game had basically open, showed that there was now a breaking of the universes and now it's like a whole it's like this it's like a multiverse type of thing where now it's a brand new storyline and a new universe and these characters all might be similar but their storylines are drastically different like for example with scorpion and sub-zero they've always had a rivalry and kind of like the animosity against each other in all the previous games but now they're brothers and there a whole different dynamic is now being created. So this is kind of like a very uh, interesting thing to see, the new story, but it also might be kind of a, a, a scary thing because if people don't like this new story, like, hey, we've seen multiverse or a side story with the Halo show and we saw how gross that ended up being. So there are times where changing things up completely could be bad, but if it's done well, then it actually opens up kind of like the possibilities that you can now run with and kind of start a whole new trend or reboot of the series of which they're trying to do here um but i really i thought mortal kombat obviously has a lot of potential i mean it's a fun fun game overall i played it uh, a bunch of times in college and it's a good time um but it can get really sweaty but anything from you guys did you guys like mortal kombat at all i'll start with uh, angelico do you have anything you want to say about mortal kombat 
Yeah, I think you did a really good job of giving pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. I thought the support system was an interesting wrinkle um, that kind of separates itself from pre not just previous Mortal Kombat, but from its competition, which is Street Fighter this year. So I thought that was interesting. The graphics, I don't know how much enhanced it is different from 11. Um, so I don't think you're going to see a big advancement there, but I do think that they're trying to add those wrinkles in the story, in the gameplay with the support characters that I do think makes things interesting. And obviously the finishing moves and the combos um, are a Mortal Kombat tradition. Yeah. And uh, hockey, anything for Mortal Kombat? I know that uh, obviously Street Fighter has been kind of the trend right now, but Mortal Kombat's another big time fighting game. Yeah, they're uh, more on the gory side too, so it's it's always pretty cool to see the the two differences. But um, yeah, I mean it's it should be a cool game. They they have a cool little backstory, like you mentioned as well, kind of switching it up a little bit. Hopefully it does well. But um, yeah, the the move sets and, and combos have always been really cool in Mortal uh, Mortal Kombat. So excited to see what comes. Yeah. So uh, next thing I want to ask you guys about what you thought. What was a good thing you saw from the showcase, uh, Angelica? What was the thing that you really enjoyed seeing from this? Yeah, and I have to go with the last one that they updated. I was getting a little nervous, right, when they showed a Final Fantasy VII, uh, I think it was mid-show, and it was a mobile game. And I was like, they're really not going to show the big guns. And they did at the end. So they showed Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on the last uh, the last announcement that they had, um, which is coming the early of 2024. And I think it's a good thing for Sony because it's been a very cloudy picture down the line on what is coming in 2024 for sony so at least you see a, a first piece which is final fantasy 7 on um, the rebirth now i know mars is not a huge fan of these part one part two and there's potentially a part three of this game um first game was mainly focused in midgard 35 hours i think open semi open world i'm not gonna call it full open world it's really a semi open world game and this one i feel probably gonna be something similar right but it's gonna be focusing on outside of midgard two discs so it feels like it's got to be a large game if you're gonna have two discs for this thing i know most people buy digital but two discs you can fit a lot on a disc so i'm wondering what the size is gonna be but it looked pretty gorgeous and the gameplay looks similar to what it was on the first final fantasy 7 remake which was always a lot of fun so i think that was a big home run uh, to end the show which was good um but we're gonna see i'm looking to see more details on it but what i saw was pretty good yeah i mean when i look at final fantasy square enix and me have a very particular relationship i i, I am a fan of their games kingdom hearts has been a, a lifelong i've been a lifelong fan of kingdom hearts so is langella kill We've been both fans of that series for just a long time, yeah. but they have done us dirty with that series and many okay. others, right? And Square Enix has proven time and time again that they would rather squeeze you out of every dime in your wallet <laughs> than come out with a game and fi finalize a series or uh, the next installment, right? And they've done this multiple times and it just, this just shows a continuation or the, the habit that they've been following with Kingdom Hearts they took what was it 15 years to come out from Kingdom Hearts 2 to 3 like 15 freaking years 2.5 2.8 like yeah. they they, they want to squeeze you out of every dime possible instead of making new content they want to rehash old stuff and this is just seems like a similar thing I think it's gonna be a good game I, I enjoyed Final Fantasy 7 I have no doubts that this will be a good recreation of the Final Fantasy 7 story but the fact that this is it originally was supposed to be two parts, which, okay, I'm not a fan of it, but I'm okay with it. So now three parts is just like, you guys are really trying to annoy the crap out of me, right? And I think, yes, it's going to be a good game, but I'm still going to rag on them for squeezing the crap out of this way more than it should be. Uh, Haki, would you feel anything toward this Final Fantasy VII, uh, the next part of this trilogy? Well, I haven't played Final Fantasy yet, and I know it's a very beloved game. So, uh, I mean, just seeing the, uh, you know, the gameplay, or at least what they showed so far, it seems pretty interesting. I, like I said, I have to kind of hop on the bandwagon uh, and, and get my feet wet uh, in Final Fantasy. But I know it, like I said, I, I know it's a very loved game, so I can't wait. Yeah, you know what, though? Final Fantasy VII is also on PS4, but the Rebirth is only on PS5, which is obviously going to hurt a lot of PS4 owners like Hockey. Um, not being able to play it unless he gets a new system. You got to um, hop on the five train. You have to, get, you have to go <laughs> buy spend five hundred dollars to get the five. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So hockey, uh, what were you excited about from this this showcase? Yeah, so the showcase in general, I thought, uh, went very well. They showed a lot of games, as, as you had said before, and they showed a good amount of gameplay as well uh, from some of these games. And some of the third parties really stood out to me. Uh, Prince of Persia, I remember playing that back in the day. Loved that game. So that was a surprise. 
and that was like the first thing they showed as well which is pretty cool so i got uh, excited right away mortal kombat we already talked about which is very cool then they came with some you know weird and kind of interesting co-op games there was one called toxic commando it was like a zombie game playing okay. left 4 dead and all those other zombie games you know this one kind of looked really interesting it looked like it was a lot of zombies so it's probably real fun for you and your buddies to go and kind of just slay some zombies and then I had to mention this because I've never seen or heard about it. I don't know if you guys knew about it, but Pal World? But they look like Pokemon with guns. Oh, no, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> there's got to be some type of... I don't of know how Xbox coming. get away with that. Dude, there's got to be some type of... That was like the Foam coming. Stars. Uh, the yeah, Xbox. Literally, it was like they looked at Pokemon and like... Nintendo. <laughs> Yo, yeah, was every, everyone's doing that now. Just apparently... It's so ridiculous. There was literally uh, one of the animals i guess looked like electabuzz and it had a gallon yeah. gun and i just lost <laughs> it you know so i mean i don't know if that's a 70 dollar game or <laughs> if, like, if it's 70 it's coming to like, game pass I it's think coming to game, game might have to try, might have to try it out Dude, to be honest yeah, that's with coming to game pass i just right. don't know how you like like when foam stars did about with splatoon i don't know how you get away that's pokemon with guns that's like joff was like it's literally pokemon with guns like everyone was like what and then literally it was i was just like yeah. it, it was that was just, hilarious it was so funny but i mean in general everything was good you know they showed a lot of games a lot of gameplay and, and some pretty interesting third-party games that i've never heard of that I might give it a try yeah how about like uh, and i'll be brief, very brief with this but i was the big news with spider-man 2 getting its an official date october 20th 2023 obviously uh, thank thank goodness they actually gave a date because i did rag on them on, the, on our sony showcase video that you gave us a trailer for for, 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 for uh sweet Pokemon for Spider Man and that's great. Like great. it gave us some gameplay of the new uh, obviously like the Venom the Venom gear and everything. But give us a date and they finally did. Now I, I wish they kind of did it two weeks ago and I get it. People argument will say you know so, Summer Game Fest is watched by everybody from all brands. So you know you're gonna get everyone now looking at Spider Man or talking about it. But I'm like yeah, but that was like a five second trailer. You should have just just given us a date and people would have been hyped about Spider Man anyway. Um. And you would have at least got a lot better press for the show, Sony Showcase. I mean, granted, they still didn't show a lot of games, but even the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, like, imagine you dropped that during the Sony Showcase, people would, like, be a little bit more positive. Like, even, like, I'm not, yeah, you know, X, Xbox fanboys are going to rag on it no matter what, but even, even the Sony fanboys that were really disheartened after the Showcase were, would have at least felt a little bit better about what they just watched versus not getting anything. So... Um, those little things there, but I actually was excited even about uh, Sonic Superstars. I feel like uh, they did a really good job of showing casing like, hey, this is like the updated version of uh, classic Sonic games. It's co-op. You can play up to four people. All Everyone has their own characters. Very similar to like Super Mario Bros. Like, uh, you know, it's, it's just updated graphics, but basically a similar gameplay. Um, they even, I think they added some new levels and everything that makes it a little bit different, which is cool. Um, but let's now transition to the bad, and these are just the areas in which we felt like they didn't really land well or some things we that they we wish we saw from the showcase um and i'll go first i mean they had obviously a lot of things they showed off but there are some things i felt like you missed out on either not showing us more or even what they did show was not really as good as i would like and i and hockey i know you like prince of persia and i thought it's a good game but the fact that it was a side scroller did get me like pissed off to be honest with you because i was like People have been wanting a Prince of Persia game for many, many years, Long and time. you finally show a trailer for one, and it's a side-scrolling Super Mario Bros-esque version of Prince of Persia. Like, you guys are kidding me, right? Like, people love open-world games, right? This, back when Prince of Persia first came out, Sands of Time, right? That was one of the first open-world, not uh, open-world, but Assassin's Creed-like game mm -hmm. that people love. And you come out with a side scroller Super Mario Bros. Prince of Persia version, right? Like, are you kidding me? Like, you guys, like, are, uh, yeah, you know, it could be cool because side scrollers are not bad, but you're Prince of Persia. Like, come out with a damn over the shoulder or Assassin's Creed like game already. Damn it. And, and, and I honestly, when they showed me the TV show of Twisted Metal, I almost blew it. My, my, my head almost exploded. Right now, granted, yeah. the trailer, the trailer is not a little scene with, uh, I think it was Anthony Mackie. It could be wrong. Anthony Mackie and uh, Will Arnett as the clown. Um, you know, like, yeah, the, the scene didn't, wasn't bad and it kind of matches Twisted Metal, but everyone wants to see the game Twisted Metal because that was what everyone's is rumored. 
that there's a game and Will Ornett in his little messaging, which was super awkward, by the way, he was just like, hey, what's up, guys? I'm so excited. And there's literally no sound. Like no one like, even says anything when Will Ornett comes on the screen. But he comes on the screen and he says, you know, hey, we're coming out the TV show. I'm voicing I, like I'm, I'm a voice actor in the show and it yeah, kind of goes along with the game. It's going to be releasing. So he just confirmed that there is a metal twisted metal game that is in development or at least getting ready to be made or, or in the process of being made. And they didn't show a single thing like, hey, there is a game like there, there's a, like there's no confirmation that a twisted metal game is even near to completion or even being made. But like you show us a TV show, you show us a clip like you're just missing out on like granted, like whatever. I'm cool with gaming adaptations being showcased in some way. But like give us it, talk about the game, too. If you have it in development, hey, talk about it. Right. I understand that they just show like. Gran Turismo, like they come out with a good. I just thought that that movie idea just gets me every time. But <laughs> I, I that's my enough for my rant. Uh, Haki, was there something that you felt was not to your expectations here? Yeah, so not to kind of bash the Final Fantasy fans, but I I heard rumors or I, I you know, I was digging around the internet and I was hoping to see uh, Elden Ring, like an Elden Ring DLC. I thought that was going to be like the, the big grand finale. So uh, either that or Fable. I understand Xbox is coming out on Sunday, their showcase for, um, you know, the, the festival. But um, I was really kind of bummed out a little bit that I didn't see the Elden Ring DLC. I'm sure we'll see something, but um, I've just been waiting so long to see what's, uh, what's coming. And the Elden Ring, man. Elden Ring is something we need to have in our lives again. Langelico, what was something that you felt you were disappointed about here? Yeah, Haki read my mind. Elden Ring was the number one thing on mine. I thought it was a perfect opportunity to speak about a DLC that was rumored to be coming out at the end of this year, and that it's two DLCs in one. The plan on Elden Ring was to have two DLCs, and they're putting it together into one large one. And so I felt like, man, an announcement really would have been great. Didn't even hear about Armored Core, but I'm also going to talk about Cyberpunk. There was a DLC rumored about Cyberpunk. We had a price leak uh, about $35 that come out, and yet we haven't even seen any of the DLC content. And I thought this was a perfect opportunity to see it, and we did not see it at all. And I will go to this game show thing as well, really quick. I didn't have a problem with showing video game adaptations, obviously with how well Last of Us and Mario Bros. have done. You're going to see more and more of them be shown at these game environments. My problem was with the scene itself. Mars said the scene wasn't that bad. But Twisted Metal is about cars and explosions, and we've got a fight scene in a arcade or a casino or something, if I look back on it. So, like, that's my issue with it is just, like, that they didn't get the vibe of Twisted Metal, which I thought was about cars and blowing stuff up with cars. And so that's the only thing. Yeah, you got the characters, but I just didn't vibe with the actual scene itself. Um, so that's, again, going to be we're going to see more and more of it. So people should get used to it. I don't mind having game adaptation shows in there as long as they're not busted up shows. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully we don't see uh, Halo Season 2 preview coming on Sunday. But um, Jesus my big thing to me would be <laughs> the big the big disaster is for me, Cyberpunk. And I felt Elden Ring, man, I was really hoping to see something from them. And we did not. Yeah, and uh, to be honest, I'll close out uh, last two things. I think Cyberpunk, they, Joff, uh, Joffrey said that they would be showing them later in the week, maybe for Cyberpunk. I think they mentioned yeah. Yeah, that was something. Time. I yeah, just thought yeah, yeah. I know, I know, and I know what you're saying because at the end of the day, I do agree with you. Like they, they should be doing that stuff. Um, and I think we're starting to see the culmination of Call of Duty turning into another version of Fortnite. Um, they, they're bad. Their trailers were. I felt like I was watching the same trailer twice. Fortnite and Call of Duty were <laughs> identical. Like they literally look the same. Um, and what they showed, the music, the art style, everything looked identical. And I felt like... Just a little Call less of, cartoonish. Yeah, like, Call of Duty, like... Hey, the thing is, Call, Call of Duty starts adding in, like, the... You know, it looks like the Street Fighter art and stuff like that. And I'm like, guys, Call of Duty is people killing each other in warfare. And we're, ta we're starting turning ourselves into Fortnite. Like, let's stop doing that. Like, the, the grittiness of Call of Duty is what made it so unique. And you're turning yourself into Fortnite. Fortnite is a game made for kids call of duty i know kids play call of duty don't get me wrong i know that but like you're you're trying to like what made us play cod at a young age when we we're not supposed to was because it was gritty and it was like an adult game right and that's what made kids want to play it you're now clinging to the kids and you're like or let's embrace the five-year-old let's embrace that like that kid culture and like when i start seeing 
so dab. That's where I'm gonna stop playing COD. I think once I start, once he drops a dab on me and I get assassinated oh, by, but I see Captain Price do like the floss. He's gonna do like the floss thing. I'm gonna, once he does that, <laughs> he does the, I'm done. I'm gonna, I'm, the he's gonna floss you to death. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna like gritty and stuff. <laughs> he's, gonna yeah, he's, gonna, he's gonna just gonna stop. I'm just gonna just uninstall the game and just never play COD ever again. But that being said, though, I think that's where we're gonna call it from that. Um, first off. Was there any game or you know things that was shown TV show game game adaptation here that you liked or disliked? Please let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't done so yet, consider subscribing and dropping a thumbs up on the video to help us push along this YouTube algorithm, this mysterious YouTube algorithm. Really would appreciate it. And obviously, until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.